Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm going to show you my entire Yu-Gi-Oh! collection. And by Yu-Gi-Oh! collection, I don't actually mean just cards, but actually all of the Yu-Gi-Oh! stuff I've accumulated over the years. Because, as you can probably guess, I'm a big Yu-Gi-Oh! fan. And, like, I collect figures, I collect, like, plushes, models, toys, all sorts of things over the years, and I just felt like this would be a really fun video to make, showing everything I got. I'll try to, you know, link where you can get some of these things for yourself, or like the story behind them, uh, and all that stuff. Yeah, it should be really fun. Probably a very long video, so strap in, and go ahead and leave a like now. Yes, please, thanks. The algorithm appreciates it. All right, so, where to start? I figure I'm gonna start with some of my rare cards that I have. These are just like the rarest things. I obviously have like loads and loads of stuff in here, but uh, we're gonna start with, I think, my most prized possession. So my most prized possession is probably the Dark Duel Stories Blue Eyes White Dragon, Beckett graded 8.5. So, uh, you know, could be better, but yeah, you guys know the story behind Dark Duel Stories. It's like, you know, the GBA game, this is not, I think, the most expensive Blue Eyes White Dragon. I still believe that's LOB First Ed ones, but it's up there. If it had gotten a higher grade, it would have been even higher up there, but not too bad. And also, I have a 9.5 Dark Magician, also from Dark Duel Stories. You can even see that they changed the color of the sticker depending on your grade. So if you actually manage to get a grade 10, you'll even get a black sticker, which I don't have one of those yet. Yeah, these are really cool. Also, shout outs to Ruxin and RhymeStyle. They helped me out with kind of learning the process of sending things in or grading. But I do have one more card. So I've also got Exodia the Forbidden One from Dark Duel Stories. I've been meaning to send this thing in for grading for ages. I have not yet. I'm hoping that it gets a pretty good grade just from looking at it. The centering's pretty good, and I believe the condition's pretty good. Kind of hard to tell inside of this like double sleeve top loader thing, but. Yeah, I want to add that kind of to the heap. I've got this Dark Magician from Battle of Chaos. The story behind this is that it's based on the artwork that Dark Magician had when Bandai actually owned the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. So they kind of like recreated that artwork for this. And the way that this was inserted into the set is that it's just randomly put into packs. It's not even where the foil in the set would be, but it's actually just a, just a, like it takes the place of a common. You could actually miss this. It's funny, when Battles of Chaos uh, had first like launched, I would always tell people, make sure that you fully open your pack because if you just get to the hollow and then throw the rest away, you could actually miss this card. It doesn't even have the Battle of Chaos like numbering on it, it just says 25th. So that's very cool. Uh, I have two of these, I believe, and I don't know where the second is, but yeah, very cool. I don't know how valuable this is today, maybe not loads, but this is a neat card for me. Um, also have a few exclusive cards that just have a bit of a story behind them. There's one that I'm missing at home and I really need to find it, but um, this is Amabi. It's from the, I want to say like one of these remote duel events they did during quarantine. So uh, I think if you just like played in the remote YCS or something, you were given this. That's a pretty cool one. I've got a few Lost Art collection cards, VWXYZ Dragon Catapult Cannon. Obviously, you know, with Lost Ark cards, there are the uncensored versions, so his cannons actually, you know, look like cannon launchers and not whatever kitty thing they replace it with. Lumina, Twilight Sworn Shaman, her only actual censoring, I believe, is just that they, um, what is it? They gave her back, like, the halo, I think, above her head or something else with her? I don't know. She's different. And Zombriah the Dark, where it actually has his Zombriah logo behind him. I've also recently just pulled this Starlight Rare Granguinol, the Dusk Dragon. I would take it out, but I feel like I'll just mess it up. So it gets to be seen through this dirty top loader, but yeah, really cool Starlight Rare card. A question for you guys, actually, just uh, if you're watching, do you guys prefer Starlight Rares, or do you prefer the new Quarter Century Secret Rares? I would love to know. So I've got a lot of token cards. Um, there's so many different tokens. These are kind of organized into stacks. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I will just say that my favorites are probably the different Karibo tokens, uh, or not Karibo, scapegoat tokens. I really want to get, I think there's a color that I'm missing. Is it the green one maybe? I'm not sure. But yeah, um, I like these. And there's lots of different tokens. Some of these are actually even like from the OCG, like they're Japanese cards that when I was opening like a Japanese product or something, I was able to get them. Let's see, which one is it? Yeah, like for instance, I have like this Yuya 20th uh, 
you get 20th anniversary card. So yeah, that's really cool. Um, now, some of the more exclusive tokens would be these tokens that you get from the token booths at YCS events. So um, I've got one where I'm with, this isn't Rite of Aramisir, this is technically the Fateful Adventure artwork, but that's Water Enchantress of the Temple. You got to like kind of be hanging out beside her like you're going into the Isekai with them. Um, first YCS token that we got at the 200th YCS, this was before Larry joined the team. So yeah, you can see Calvin, me, Chris, Alec, Alex, Trell. It was kind of tough all fitting in this picture, but we did it. Um, another token that we got from, I think this was the San Diego Comic-Con event from this year. Kind of fun. And um, this was a New York Comic-Con 2020 token, so cool. Yeah, getting to custom tokens are fun. It kind of is a nice way to like immortalize your time with the game. I also have this collection of retro old cards. So um, these are in no particular order. Some have a bit of a story to them. I'll go quick. This is Salamandra. This is also from Dark Duel Stories. I've got a Graceful Dice. I've got a Magic Cylinder. I've been trying to get more and more of these in first edition where I can. Got an exchange. Now here's where some cool ones come in. I've got a Stardust Dragon from Duelist Genesis First Ed signed by Greg Abbey, the voice of Yusei. Pretty cool. Um, Flame Swords are nothing too special on him. This, I believe, is the misprint Guy the Dragon Champion, where the secret rare foiling is going the opposite direction than it normally does. So that's a misprint. I actually had a chance to buy the double misprint version of this. There's one where it has a secret rare artwork, but ultra rare text. And then there's a one where it's like that, and it's like this, where the like foiling is going the opposite color, or the opposite direction. So I didn't get that because it was like 250 bucks and I didn't have that much money at the time. So um, Sayaru, another Dark Duel Stories card. This is actually a Harpy Lady that was signed by Mai's voice actress. She actually um, wrote a nice little like letter here. This is Megan Hollyfield and there's like a, a heart. I think she wrote me like an actual sort of message on like a Mai poster that I got at the event. But I left that at home unfortunately. So should have brought that for this video. Technically it's not my full collection then is it? And some old classic retro cards. Um, in their original printings where I can get them, this is like one of the anniversary pack cards, Blue Eyes. Um, this Red Eyes is signed by Joey's voice actor. Blue Eyes Toon Dragon, signed by Pegasus's voice actor. Also got my Time Wizard signed. And then just more um, retro cards. Anything that's got a story, I'll kind of stop and talk about, but yeah. Some of these aren't in the best condition, like this Exodia is from LOB. It's not first ed, I really wanna get a first ed one, but you know that's pricey. It's a little beat, but still you gotta start somewhere with a collection. Valkyrion, misprint uh, Goblin Attack Force. So it actually, uh, well, take a look at it and you can see if you can find the misprint for yourself. Anyway, uh, got, of course, LOB Blue Eyes, but not first yet. Five-Headed Dragon, Skull Dice, Acid Trap Hole, I believe, is the third and final of the Dark Duel Stories cards. Now, this is the other Gaia the Dragon Champion misprint that I was talking about. Ultra Rare Text, Secret Rare Foiling, but the Secret Rare still looks normal. Got an Enemy Controller, I don't know why this is not sleeved, I've been caught lacking. Uh, Ring of Destruction, Dawn's Alug. Another Magic Cylinder. Nobleman of Crossout, actually first edition as well. And I've got Dark Magician, more blue eyes, um, structure deck things, tin things. These all just come from different places. What was the story with this one? This is a premium collection, I think. I think there's like a special set or something. Wait, 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 PCY. I think this is the first Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, like the Yu-Gi-Oh video game series where it's like, Kaiba the Power, Joey the Passion, and Yugi the Destiny or something. I believe that's where this Dark Magician comes from. Are these all upside down? Okay. Yeah, so got a Raigeki. This is the Blue Eyes equivalent of that Dark Magician. Blue Eyes, Reload, Messenger of Peace. A couple more cards. Limiter Removal, Graceful Charity. I don't know why I have this ultimate rare charcoal and pachi, but I have it. It's ulti first. It's cool, one of my favorite cards. A wicked wooden spirit that has burned out. The barbecue grilled with this charcoal is so awesome that everybody thinks it's priceless. Cost down. Limiter removal. Got a first ed premature burial. 
Solemn Judgment. I actually got this one from Trell. It's like falling apart. It's very weak constitution. Um, and Diffusion Wave Motion. So yeah, just kind of my collection of old school cards. I'm always looking for more where I can find them. Here are the Egyptian God cards as well. Uh, I actually forgot to show them with my other cards, but what's special about these is that these are the God cards that don't have their effects and they have just sort of flavor text, but it's written like an effect. I always thought that was really cool. Um, colored card backs, my favorite part for sure. Like I just, you know, Obelisk actually being blue, Slifer actually being sort of red and uh, robbing yellow is very neat. I'm trying to remember where they each came from. One came from a magazine, I think that's him. Yeah, JMP, the Shonen Jump magazine. This was something from a Yu-Gi-Oh, like Yu-Gi-Oh the movie or something like that, some movie promotion pack. And then this is DOD, which I think is Duels of Destiny or something of the Xbox, the first Xbox Yu-Gi-Oh game. So yeah, and I got this little case to keep them all in, just something I grabbed on Amazon. Although there are official cases that they sell in the OCG, so I'd like to maybe pick one up one day, but yeah, got my Egyptian God cards. Okay, so one other card that I actually forgot to mention is I got this on eBay recently. Uh, Elemental Hero Air Neos, first edition, actually. So um, as you guys know, it's kinda, this card is a bit of a history. It's sort of has been erased from Yu-Gi-Oh's existence, so I thought I would grab one. And eventually I'll be getting it graded, so yeah. Um, it even comes in this cool like eBay authenticity guarantee case. All right, a lot of sleeves to go through. These are all just kind of official Yu-Gi-Oh sleeves that I have. Different stories for different ones. We'll kind of speed run it. So two different 25th anniversary sleeves. These are all, of course, you know, from Japan. There's also these fire sleeves that they make. Um, I don't know if they have ones for each attribute. I believe they at least have a wind one, I believe, so. I want to get my hands on that. There's the Kigari and Engage sleeves for Sky Strikers, if you're a fan of those. I know Konami loves them. They give them so much merchandise. World Championship 2023 sleeves. Red World Championship 2023 sleeves. I believe these are the maybe more like valuable variant. Um, this sleeve is in Master Duel. I don't really have a name for it. It's just kind of... Generic Yu-Gi-Oh sleeves from Japan. Um, the Witchcrafter sleeves, these actually aren't really all that rare. I think they just came in Magnificent Mavens. Same with um, the Mayakashi sleeves. Let's see. Just these kind of unbranded gray sleeves. I think that they're like Rush Duel, although I don't know why they would really need to have that on there, but okay. Signer Dragon Sleeve, so we've got Black Rose Dragon, Red Dragon Archfiend, Black Wing Dragon, Ancient Fairy Dragon, Power Tool Dragon, Stardust Dragon, and yeah, that's them. And they also have these accompanying field centers if one wants to use these. It's crazy the OCG gets to have this stuff and we just kind of don't in the TCG. Konami is definitely lacking in that department. Yugi and Kaiba 25th Anniversary Sleeves. We're going to be getting these released in the TCG next year, so that's pretty cool. Um, these are World Championship Qualifier Sleeves from 2020. I got them for playing in the 2020 Remote Duel Invitational, so that was pretty cool. More World Championship Sleeves that you could only buy at the event. It's um, Dragon, like White Dragon of Blue and like Magician of Dark, I think are the names of these monsters. And then there's these recent ones that they've been releasing in stores. I don't know why I just kind of grabbed these, but these are, you know, the Dark Magicians. So, pretty cool. I did forget when I was showing my sleeves that I have some Master Duel sleeves. They usually give these away in social media giveaways. So there's the, like, white or light color, sort of light mode Master Duel sleeves. And then the dark mode sleeves, I just happen to have two of them. One I think I picked up, like, I picked these up at Worlds and I got this from, like, a social media giveaway, I think was the story. It's sometimes hard to remember. While we're at it, I've got this, these like random pins. There's a Rescue Rabbit, a Dark Magician Girl, Time Wizard, and Black Rose. I think that these were given as kind of like prizes or participation or something for playing at maybe a Comic-Con booth, something like that. Okay, now we're gonna show the play mats. There's a lot of these, so I'm gonna try to kind of rapid fire them. I have them in vague categories. These are all kind of magician or dark magician themed ones, so uh, I'll put them together. World Championship 2023, very cool. We've also got 
This is the Dark Magician mat from the 20th anniversary, specifically from the OCG. You can see the, the logo there. Um, I really like this art of Dark Magician. I think it's super underrated. People don't like it. One of my favorite things about these mats is that they kind of made the zones actually like kind of look like part of like the design of the mat, like they're not just kind of embossed on. So I thought that was kind of neat. Next, we've got, they released this in the year that they released like, I want to say it was like Dual Overload maybe. Um, so it's got like Yugi and Dark Magician and it's a bunch of like, Dual Saga, Dual Saga, I think is when they released this. And yeah, it's just got a lot of different monsters, uh, tournament relevant monsters in the background. Next, we have Yugi and his Dark Magicians. I love this. This is the one they released for a Legendary Duelist, Magical Hero. Always really love this one. This is the Dark Magician Girl artwork that we got in the TCG. This is a very cool mat. They don't normally get this kind of creative with the framing. I like it. Like, they gave her a frame and, like, it's like her, you know, different, like her magical rod. Uh, a little airbrush tool used over there. You might see something different later on, though. But yeah, a nice, nice mat. Um, Dark Magician Girl, the Dragon Knight. Really cool kind of zone shape thing here. The, the, the zones. I think this was for a, one of the early Battles of Legends. Different Dark Magician Girl mat. You might notice it says Black Magician Girl. You might notice a difference there too, but I can't tell. So uh, yeah, this is another OCG mat. I got this just this year at Worlds. Really fun one. Next, we've got 2017 Regional Mat. This is Eben Illusion Magician, I believe. Or it might be called Eben High Magician, but I think this is Eben Illusion Magician is his name. And the uh, Magic Karibo Mat. This is just a fun one they release in stores, but yeah. These, let me get it right. These mats are all based on dragons. Usually that's gonna be blue eyes, but you know, there could be others. Okay, so this is another world championship mat. I don't know why they made these small. I just have no clue, but they did. So, that's what you get. Um, Kaiba and Blue Eyes Jet Dragon. This was for San Diego Comic-Con last year, I want to say, 2022. Kaiba's Duel Link's fourth anniversary mat. You got um, Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon, and Kaiba always looks really cool. Got a level Konami likes to do this whole, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelinks.com, like the whole website down here in the corner. I don't, I never understood that. Uh, Red Eyes Regional 2016 mat. I made it a point to get all of the regional mats, although I don't know if I still have the Blue Eyes uh, Spirit Dragon one, but it, if I do have it, it'll be in the stack. Yeah, cool. Um, Casey Grand Tournament 2021. This is uh, Yusei and his Stardust, another Duel Links mat. Stardust Dragon. Uh, Maybe a 2021 Comic-Con thing? I feel like there's a Comic-Con or a one of those events. Same story, Black Rose Dragon. Black Rose is a really cool dragon. I feel like I don't give it enough credit, but they're like petal kind of rose-like wings are a very cool design. Kazuki Takahashi really does not fail um, when it comes to those dragon designs. He was a master of it. Duel Links, I believe uh, Alec got this for playing in the Duel Links Arc 5 Invitational in 2021. It's got Yusei, or no, Yuya, Odd Eyes, Stargazer, Time Gazer, or Time Gazer, whatever. Anyway, there they are. Code of the Duelist Sneak Peek. This kind of brings me back to when I was trying to collect a lot of Sneak Peek mats. Not been able to get very many as of late, but Firewall Dragon, um, very cool mat. I used to use this in a lot of old APS videos around like 2017, 18. You'll see it in a lot of like those old duels. Borlo Dragon, same thing. We usually have them facing off. They are like rival protagonist monsters. So yeah, Circuit Break, one of my favorite sets. Ignition Assault, not really one of my favorite sets, but the mat's kind of cool if you're into like kind of the pink, orange, yellow aesthetic. I'm not as much so, but um, Ignition Assault was a cool set, at least at Ignisters. World Championship 2019 mat. I got to go to Germany for this trip, and that was a hell of a lot of fun. Um, you can actually see riding on top of this giant dragon is um, this monster. I don't remember its name, but it actually has its own unique mat and like they're, and like card, so it's kind of cool. Um, yeah. Kirihara Divincarnate, the regional mat from like early this year, late last year. 
I gotta say, man, this is a really beautiful mat. Like, I think, like, obviously she's like a beautiful card, but just the way they use the fire and like they contrast it so well against like just this otherwise black background and the red dragon. Something about it's like, it's a nice mat. It's a really nice one. And then Yuya World Championship 2023 match. This is basically what you got uh, to sort of represent dual links at Worlds this year. Really vibrant. I feel like they just amped up the inking with this. So it looks great. Um, I think this is either an alt art of Odd Eyes or maybe another one that's forms. I'd have to ask Alec. He's a Yuya. Uh, super fan, I think you would know best. All right, so for our next set of mats, we've got Egyptian God cards. Or mostly the theme here. And I think maybe Sacred Beast might be in there too. This is a God card mat from, I think the year that they released the God card decks, or maybe it was shortly after. It's cool, got them kind of in a little triple thing. New York Comic Con mat, kind of a cooler variation on that. This is like the art that um, is used in the name of the cards. The Revive Sky God, the Breaking Ruin God, and some raw card. Really freaking awesome art though. I love it. Egyptian God cards typically make for really good mats. This is the Egyptian God deck Slifer variant mat. I actually don't love this one. Um, I feel like the, the lightning takes up like too much of the composition here. But maybe it's better that way. I don't know. What do you guys think? Obelisk, I think this one's a little bit cooler. He's doing, you know, his like Fist of Fate. I think that's a, a cooler way of depicting it. It makes for better use of space, but again, subjective. And then you can have both, where they just kind of split it uh, down the middle. I actually think that it works a little bit better this way, though, because I feel like Slifer gets to, you get to see more of him on his side, and that's very cool. So, uh, yeah, I remember when we were doing videos for these play mats, they sent us a lot of these to like, work on with the videos, so awesome. This was the Winged Dragon of Ra. Um, and it's new art that it got in the Merrick Duelist pack. Don't remember. Rage of Ra, I think was the name of that set. And so you could get this mat at 2020 New York Comic Con. It's a nice mat. A lot of fire, golden bird. Ra's not my favorite god, so it's kind of hard for me to love it, but... And then these were the Team YCS mats. So there was, um, Uriah. And we also have Raviol. I don't have a Haman one and I'm so upset because like as a team you got like the three mats, but I don't know what happened and why I don't have a Haman one. Just don't, it's kind of sad. And Sacred Beast Structure Deck mat. So this is also a really cool one. A little bit busy if you don't kind of know what the Sacred Beasts are. You might just assume that this is an Egyptian God one, but I quite like it. It's a nice mat. Uh, dark backgrounds kind of tend to work really well in play mats, I think. Like vibrant colors, dark background, recipe for success. A lot more mats to go. Uh, did I drop one? Uh, okay, well that's, that's technically a, a different one. Okay, so. 25th anniversary Yugi Kaiba. It's small. I don't know why they do these small mats. I mean, I guess you can play like Speed Duel on them maybe, but I like it. Duel Links, this was the second anniversary. I know it was whenever they added GX into Duel Links, so. You get Yugi and Jaden. I quite like this mat. It's a personal favorite of mine. Um, Yusei Fudo, just Stardust 2010 mat. Shout out to my friend uh, Fabian. He knows who he is. He gave me this mat. And it's beautiful. Like, it's, it's a relic. It's from 2010. I don't even know how you got this. Like, like, maybe you went to a sneak peek or won a regional. I don't know how you got it. But it's Yusei and his dual runner, so obviously very cool. So bizarre seeing old mats that don't have the extra monster zones. Just uh, takes you back to a different time. Remote duel, did you remote duel during COVID safely with your friends? I know I did. Uh, this is what the math you could like get. I think they did these as like prizes at the remote duel invitationals and all kinds of stuff like that. So uh, yeah, they got the Vagabond, he's playing. Wouldn't this not be the coolest setup? Like what if Konami actually sold this? And, like you actually played remote duels like that. You just buy one of these for like 2000 bucks or something in the store is how much it costs. But man, does it look cool. Another remote dual mat. This one actually has zones on it, so it's cool. There's the Vagabond, and I forget the name of... They both have names, but yeah, kind of the nameless characters that appear in all the Yu-Gi-Oh! video games. Um, uh, someone was telling me earlier that this like, kind of reminds them of Red, like from Pokemon. So, cool. 200th YCS uh, Gold Tarcophagus mat. Always very fun. Something always that always bothered me about Gold Tarcophagus is that, like, I know it's kind of supposed to be like floating towards you, 
But the fact that it's not symmetrical, just always like, I don't know. I just, I never liked that. It's always just kind of like off center. What's cool about this map though, is that it shows all the dates and locations for every YCS leading up to this one, you can see. So that's kind of the, the gimmick here. Um, I did not get to go to that many of these YCS events, but I did get to go to the 200th. Original Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game play mat. Funny store. Okay, so A, this is upper deck literally in the corner, um, which is kind of just, you know, there's a little bit of history there. You guys all know about upper deck entertainment. Funny story about this, actually, that I can tell. So, um, I got this mat for $5 at, like, a used bookstore. To this day, like, I know this is worth quite a bit, and there just aren't a lot of these out in the wild, but I got it in a bin at a bookstore, and they just... Someone, I guess, had sold it in and they just didn't know what it was worth. So I paid five bucks for this. And it's in pretty decent condition for something that's like literally from 2002, three. So, awesome. Uh, San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Yugi and Exodia mat. This one I want to say is from like, probably doesn't have a year on it. 2018 maybe would be like the year, roughly 2018, something like that. Battle of Chaos sneak peek mat. It's got uh, Master of Chaos, I believe is the monster. Not a big fan of this mat. I feel like it doesn't make great use of its space. He just sort of looks superimposed on there and then they just blue sparkles for the rest. So not my favorite. Toon Chaos mat. I like this because in a rare twist of fate, they changed the fonts for the like names of the zone. So it actually kind of uses the Toon font. And of course you have Toon Blackluster Soldier back there looking, uh, you know, mischievous and evil. This was from uh, the... Comic-Con at home. So it was like San Diego Comic-Con, but you could kind of like win it by playing in Remote Duel or something like that. Might have been the story. Flame Wingman Scorching Rage, I think is the name of this monster, or Skydive Scorcher or something like that. This is from this year's uh, San Diego Comic-Con, I believe. So this is awesome. Uh, this is a really great composition. He's like flying down between the two buildings and using his like Scorching Rage attack or whatever. Skydive Scorch, I think is the name of the attack. Speed Duel Mat, Jaden, Flame Wingman. We used these very recently in our Duel Academy box. Or actually, we used them in our Streets of Battle City video, so check that out if you haven't already. It's really fun. Speed Duels are cool. They're underrated. People don't give them enough credit. I'm getting electrocuted by these mats. I don't know if that's coming off on camera, but uh, I guess they're just static. Aster Phoenix and Destiny Hero Plasma also got mats. Oh yeah, it's Speed Duels, three zones. Surprised that even within their mats, they don't actually give you like a place to put skill cards. It's always a little weird to me. Yusaku, an access code talker. Or rather, Playmaker, an access code talker. From Anime Expo of last year, 2022. I remember buying this at the Konami booth. Pretty cool mat, actually. Um, so, even though people hate access code talker in game, he makes for a pretty cool ace monster in the context of an anime, huh? 2023 World Championship Master Duel Playmat. Pretty freaking cool. Um, this is Blackwing Full Armor Master. This was part of the Road to Worlds campaign. I remember you got a Royal Rare Blackwing Armor Master. Rare to see the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel logo on a mat. I think they're doing a giveaway for this on social media right now. I'm not entirely sure. Albaz and Ecclesia. This came uh, went out when like the... Albaz strike structure came out, so you get to see them on both sides, kind of contemplating their shared but different fates and the tragic story that I couldn't entirely recite to you. It's a pretty cool mat. Trap Tricks Regional 2020 mat. Um, I don't remember how I got this. I'm not gonna lie. <sighs> Maybe someone gave it to me. Um, I'm not a huge Trap Tricks fan. Like, you know, it's a cool deck. It's just not really my thing. But as for a mat, I think if you're a fan of the archetype, it's cool. Um. IP Mascarena, this is another one that you can just buy in stores. They just released this art of her in Master Duel, but originally she just had this artwork. I don't like dueling against IP Mascarena, but I will say that the whole like purple and yellow aesthetic makes for a great mat, so. Gets a pass. Gold Pride mat, this is Gold Pride Captain Carey. Uh, I think this is the most recent one that you can buy in stores, so, awesome. Uh, optimal play mat, this is I think Ascator Dawnwalker. Maybe um, this one was made by Nim Nim. So um, his optimal apparel line, you know, he makes like mats. And uh, I actually have the one that came before it. There's like the Dawn Walker and the Dusk Walker one. And I don't know what happened to the other one. I really wanted to be able to show them both, but I don't think I currently have them both here. So 
Melfi mat. This is a custom artwork I had, had done. We used to sell these mats, but then uh, certain legal forces came to stop the fun. So, uh, yeah, 2020 Team APS. Shout out to the artist, though, who drew it. They did an absolutely wonderful job. I love these cute pastel colors. If you're a Melfi fan and you got your hands on it when it was on sale, well, must be nice. Okay, so next we're gonna go into the figures. I've got a lot of these. This isn't actually all of them yet, but uh, here's just kind of the start. So I've got these first four figures, uh, Blue Eyes White Dragon and Dark Magician. So I really like these. They are quite detailed, so that's really fun. And they are actually the light up kind. So if it has battery still, yeah, when I turn this on, it actually lights up his dark magical circle. And if you do it like this, then it can just all kind of stay lit at the same time. So I really like these. These are cool. Blue eyes on the other hand, his is a little harder to see. I think they could have done a, a better job of making this brighter, but um, his white lightning, I'll just kind of flicker it and it shows up. And it's kind of like electrical and that's really cool. I have already ordered, um, I've actually already ordered or pre-ordered the Dark Magician Girl and the Red Eyes Black Dragon one that they're coming out with. But yeah, if you guys wanna pick these up, I believe you can just get them at some game stores and conventions. They tend to be on sale a fair bit. Uh, and they're on sale, I think, on First Four Figures websites. Fair warning, they're a little pricey. But if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh! whore like me, it's okay, it's worth it. Okay, next is these Kotobukiya character um, sort of figures. These aren't too expensive. They're usually about 80, 90 bucks a piece. I've got Yami Bakura from the Battle City Finals. I like how they look like they're dueling on the rubble from Kaiba's like dual island. Uh, Yami Yugi as well. They all let you like put cards in their hand and have dual discs. So he's supposed to have a card in his hand. I don't know where that card is. These cards are very small and they can slip out, but pretend he has one there. We've got Merrick, you know, Yami Merrick. He also is supposed to be able to have a card there. I think he actually has a, oh yeah, he's got his Millennium Rod, and I think that he's got like a way, it's like attached back here so you can move it. And there's a way you can have it in his hand, but uh, offhand I'm not sure. And I've got Seto Kaiba, also from Battle City, looking pretty cool. It always looks like you should view it from the front, but he actually it looks way cooler when you view it like sideways. I think the pose works better. And then the one that I don't like as much is my Joey figure. And the reason why I don't like it is twofold. First of all, he's not wearing his Battle City attire. I think this one was released earlier. He's just kind of wearing his Domino High uniform. But also, his scale is slightly smaller than everybody else's, so it kind of doesn't fit. But the thing is, when you buy it, they say it's one-seventh scale like the rest of them, but it's not one-seventh scale, or one-eighth, or whatever it is. It's not the same as the rest of them. It's like slightly smaller, so. It's those little things that bother you, like where it's, it's not quite, it doesn't fit in, and they never made a Battle City Joey figure, at least not to my knowledge. Um, also, his dual disc is broken. Uh, this is supposed to like be under it, kind of like that. But um, these things are a little bit brittle, and that would probably be my one review of them if I had to kind of give you a warning. They're like 80 to 100 bucks, kind of depending. You might find them a little bit cheaper, but it's a little easy for the cards and stuff to fall out, so just be kind of aware of that. Um, yeah, those are the characters. Now let's get into the Egyptian gods. So these are the three Egyptian god cards. These were very fun to collect. I actually made individual opening videos for them on the second channel, APS Amplifier. Go subscribe if you haven't already. We've got Sly for the Sky Dragon. Let's get a nice close look at him. Um, this one's a little annoying. It's actually really detailed and like the paint job and stuff is great, but these like sort of spike things along, they're, they're sharp. These can actually like hurt you while you're setting it up and like scrape you and like graze your skin. Be very careful. Then there's the Winged Dragon of Ra. You gotta be very careful with this guy. He is kind of designed to like be floating, but he can technically articulate. I'm not going to do it too much here, but he can articulate to where he can stand, although he doesn't stand up that well. And his tail likes to fall out because it's actually in like three segments. So you have to be careful when you're moving it around, but man, does it look cool too. And Obelisk the Tormentor, which, okay, he, this dude fucking doesn't miss leg day. His legs are so just like chunky. You can even just tell like from the back and stuff. He's pretty cool. Uh, he's way heavier than the other two. Like the other two kind of feel like they're largely hollow inside. 
he's a brick. Like he actually is just a unit. So I really love these things. They're on the price here and they're like 200 bucks a piece, 250 maybe. You can get them online. I would suggest getting them as a set just because like, I feel like having one would kind of be lame, but that's like a lot of money too, so. Yeah, Egyptian God cards. Okay, so um, next I figure I'll just show my pot collection of sorts. There's actually technically a pot of greed collection that like Konami is releasing that you had to pre-order earlier this year that has like figures of all of them, but these are really cool and everybody tends to like them. So this is a sort of mini pot of greed mug. It's uh, like ceramic and really cool, pretty detailed. I like these. I didn't know though that they also made the dragon capture jar of all things. That's neat. Here's Pot of Avarice. He's got his uh, mustache. I never knew that, that was a mustache until very recently. Um, and Pot of Riches. It's nice and fat, like I guess a rich person would be. Then I've got this Pot of Greed that's actually from Shop Yu-Gi-Oh! So it's kind of a separate line. Um, you can see it's got a much different kind of take on the art and like painting and stuff. But it's also a little bit bigger ceramic mug. And then the Pies de l'Estance. <gasps> the actual Pot of Greed large um, vase. I don't know, I guess is what you would call this. This is also made from Bandai, like most of these things have been. This thing is big, and you gotta be pretty careful with it. They kinda warn you about it, but it's very ornately painted. Each one's individually painted, they say. So they're all a little bit unique. This is the mascot card for our podcast, the Pod of Greed. We also do that over on the second channel, APS Amplifier. Check it out if you haven't already. And if you reach inside of it, rumor has it, you can draw two cards. I'm failing to do that successfully here. This is supposed to be a funny bit, darn it. You can draw two cards, all right? This is what we use for our questions in the podcast. Check it out. All right, so these are the Funko Pop figures I have. There are actually a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! Funko Pop like figures. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna like really try to collect them all, but I will show you what I have. So we've got Red Eyes Black Dragon or uh, Red Eyes B Dragon. I guess that's actually released before they changed it officially. We have the Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. I So I really like this thing, but I didn't know that they made an alternate version of it where it's silver. I got this at GameStop and it even came with a shirt. I don't have the shirt on me, but I do wear it in like random podcast episodes and stuff. So. You can definitely see, you know, where it is. Um, Summon Skull. This is a really cool one. I didn't think he would get a Funko figure, but I think it looks really good in it. Uh, I got the Yugi and Yami figures. I think these are actually released in different waves, which is sort of why they have slightly different colorations to like the hair and everything like that. We used these in a Halloween Yu-Gi-Oh skit that we did a few years back, um, where it's like kind of like the Funko Pop figures are sort of evil. Um, Wing Dragon of Ra. Alec has one of these as well, and funny story, he got it, and like it didn't have the blue gem in the head. It just kind of was like removed, I guess damaged or something. Pharaoh at him, where he's uh, sitting in his sitting in his throne. We have Exodia, the Forbidden One. Always cool. I got a few Exodia things I'll show right after this, in fact. And Five-Headed Dragon, a card that's like really kind of cool and iconic from the anime, but doesn't get all that much love. I was surprised they gave it a Funko Pop figure. I know that they did recently announce, they they recently announced a Jinzo and Time Wizard figure. And I gotta have the Jinzo for very obvious reasons, Android Psycho Shocker. But yeah, these are the, the Funko Pops. Okay, so here's something really cool. Uh, I've got a Time Wizard alarm clock. It doesn't actually have a battery in it right now because it takes like these special batteries and I think you have to like remove his cape to put the batteries in and I'm kind of afraid to do that. I don't even have the battery that it takes anyway. But, um, yeah, it's cool. It's got like his little the rod with the skulls and everything else. And uh, I'm assuming that the batteries were inside. You could actually, uh, I guess, use it. I don't know if it actually has like an alarm. It must. Does it say time magic? That'd be cool. Time magic. I have rescue rabbit plushes. These are usually given out as like prizes and stuff at YCS events. Um, Konami has sent me these over the last year or two for different things. And for those of you lucky folks who just happen to be in the middle of the video, you didn't skip to the end or anything, I am actually gonna give one of these away. So all you have to do is just blend in with the comments left below. You don't have to say anything in particular. Just like the video and uh, yeah, maybe you can like leave me a hint that you saw it, but uh, you made it this far. But yeah, yeah, these are really cool. 
This is, I think something they released when Master Duel came out because Rescue Rabbit is the sort of mascot for Master Duel, but these are really high demand. I didn't know that they were. Apparently they're worth a few hundred bucks online a piece and I have like a few of them now. So yeah, if you wanna get this, like the video, leave a comment, cool. Also have Big Plush Exodia. This was uh, something that was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive this year as well. Shout out to my friend Sleepy Gibbs. She's a streamer, um, used to go by the name of Yummy Bakora. She streamed Duel Link stuff. She was at the event and actually got me the Time Wizard and the Exodia, uh, picked them up for me and I just bought them from her and she shipped them over. This Exodia is really cool. It's just very big and its head is like a football. So I like it. It's quite soft, very nice sort of suede feeling thing. Speaking of Exodia, I have a few other Exodia things. I'll actually show them all together. I've got this little tiny collectible Exodia. This came in a like Target product, I wanna say. I bought it at Target. Um, it was just one of those things where like you, you buy it and you get like a random little Yu-Gi-Oh figure. I'd love to collect them all, but I'm not gonna play that gotcha. So I uh, got Exodia and he just sticks on this little thing and it's really cool. Uh, what else do I have? Okay, another really cool Exodia thing I have is this Bandai um, plastic model kit that they recently released. Picked this up while I was in Japan for Worlds this year. And you actually have to put it together piece by piece, which is very fun, even like his chains and stuff like that. This is uh, very shoddily put together. I am not a Gunpla model figure, you guys can probably tell. I should definitely like shave down the um, sort of parts where you break it off. And Alec was saying that we can like panel line it to kind of make the details stick out a lot more, but this is kind of just how it goes. It's actually posable. I'm not going to pose it too much here, but like the legs and stuff do sort of move and all that. And, you can make him like stand in different poses, but I, oh yeah, okay, cool, he stands up here. Yeah, I won't mess around with that too much, but I have inadvertently somehow become a bigger Exodia fan than I ever thought I would be. Uh, there's actually a huge Exodia, like one-to-one -one sort of bust figure that like, it's like a, a one, it's not a big, I don't know what it is. It's like this tall and like this wide. It's just like his just chest and face and like, I really want to get it, but it's like a thousand dollars online, so. Someone wants to hook me up, that'd be cool, but no, no, don't, I'll, I'll get it myself eventually. Giant um, Millennium Puzzle Plush. This was made by Hypeland. It's great for sitting on your couch. Maybe you could take a little nap on it. I really like it. Uh, yeah, Hypeland, check them out. They had a Yu-Gi-Oh collab, it was very cool. Other cool plush things. We've got just kind of a Yami Yugi sort of chibi figure. He's pointing, he's angry. Yeah, there's him, and then there's also a Blue Eyes White Dragon. I got this at like, I wanna say Akon this year, just from a, a vendor, it gave me a little bit of a deal on it. So these are always really nice. Rainbow Karibo, not actually the card Rainbow Karibo, it is just literally a Karibo plush. Uh, it is rainbow colored. I don't know if this is like a Pride Month thing or if they just kind of did it. It's really cool. Although I think this is actually make for a really cool alternate art card of Karibo itself. Would that not be pretty awesome? They did a few different monsters, I think, in this line, and I just happened to get this when I went to uh, Portland, Oregon to visit the professor to do some Magic the Gathering vids and grab it at a card shop. Very cool, very cute. I would say happy Pride, but it's September, so. Oh yeah, I also just remembered I've got this U2's Dark Magician figure, but it's the Ghost Rare variant. So um, these are these really cool figures that they released just earlier this year. I think they were up for pre-order. They're gonna be actually like shipping in the fall, but they sent me one uh, to check out. And there's a one in six chance that your figure will be a ghost rare, just all white one. Some people really like this aesthetic. Some people really think it's like lazy because it's like, oh, this didn't paint it. It looks terrible. I like it. I think it's cool. Um, so yeah, check out YouTube's. Okay, so now I'm gonna kind of be like uh, just shotgunning random stuff unless I reach another major category. This was a uh, deck box that you could get at World. It's a just black deck box, has the Millennium Puzzle. Um, there's really nothing super special about it beyond that though. So I uh, just wanted to show it really quickly. I actually am not currently using it, but it's a pretty cool thing. Yu-Gi-Oh! Water Bottle. Uh, I believe this was like one of the cheaper prizes that you could get at the booths at, I believe that was Anime Expo 2022. So it's kind of cool. It just, it's literally a normal water bottle. Uh, travel with it maybe if you want, exercise, something like that. Konami's gotta let you know they made it in case you forgot. Okay, so these are kind of cool. Um, Yugi rug. It's a rug. Um, yeah, I, mean, I don't know if I'd actually ever really wanna put it on the floor. 
because I wouldn't want to step on it and mess it up. I and mean, I guess you can wash it, but yeah, it's just Yugi. This is part of the Hype Land uh, collab. There's also uh, Blue Eyes Toon Dragon, a fun one to make into a into a rug. Also from Hype Land. He's. I guess I was kind of holding him, kind of holding him wrong. He's sort of supposed to be like this, but uh, you know, there he is. Okay, speaking of Hype Land, got a couple more things from them. So these are Yu-Gi-Oh! Tapestries. We actually use these in the Pot of Greed, or Pot of Greed podcast. So again, a little plug for that. Check it out. This one, I'm going to try to show this on camera and you guys can just kind of imagine the rest. Kaiba and Blue Eyes. Eh. There it is. Also got Yugi and Dark Magician. Very cool as well. Uh, hopefully you can kind of see the gist of that. They're large. They're like taller than I am. Uh, yeah, sold as High Plans Yu-Gi-Oh! Collab. They made a My Valentine one. I meant to get it, but at the time I had or like ordered so much stuff, I just didn't think I would have like, I was like, oh, I need to probably like save my money and just get it later, and I never ended up getting it, and I don't think it's on sale anymore. It kind of sucks. Okay, uh, oh, yeah, you know, speaking of like tapestry stuff, so I did get this Blue Eyes White Dragon thing. This is from Wish.com. There's a video that Trell did where he actually opened this up, and uh, it's actually just a kind of print of Blue Eyes. So while the quality, while the quality is a little bit cheap, it does depart, so we just put it over the window. And uh, yeah, there it is. Okay, here's something kind of fun and random. Blue Eyes Ramen Bowl. This is from Shop Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't really know uh, why they thought this was a good idea, but uh, yeah, it's kind of got this blue design and uh, the Blue Eyes is there. It's an official Yu-Gi-Oh! product, that's all I can say. Okay, so something that you could eat inside of your Blue Eyes Ramen Bowl is maybe some Wing Dragon of Ramen. This is a real product. This existed. Spicy Ramen. It is currently expired. As I hold it, I can actually like feel the mushiness slightly to it. But yeah, we did a little taste test video where we made it, but it is an official product. Copyright 2020 Studio Daishueisha TV Tokyo Konami. Uh, so yeah, you could eat your ramen inside of your Blue Eyes Ramen Bowl. Weird Yu-Gi-Oh products like this are always a fun treat. I also have dual discs. I technically have four of these. I only brought out two to show, but um, I've got one of the old ones and the new ones. The old ones are actually superior, more or less. These were like released in 2004, I want to say, when Battle City was airing. So they're worth a fair bit if you can find them in decent condition. We've used these for loads of skits. You can actually fit cards here. If you have batteries, you can put the batteries in and it actually like will display life points and you can like use these buttons to kind of increase and decrease them. These damaged cards, they really aren't like sized properly for cards with sleeves and you would never want to like cram your cards in here if you had a choice anyway. That's where your field spell goes. They're not also really well sized for adult hands. They were definitely for kids. So anytime that we've done those old skits using dual discs, just know that the people acting in said skits were in a lot of pain. These are not actually very big wrist, wrist sections. These are the new ones that they released for, I guess, the 25th anniversary. You can get these at some select stores and stuff. There's a problem with them, though. They are a little bit bigger, so they can uh, accommodate sleeved cards. But this part here does not, like, it's not firm. Like, and this one, this is firm where you can put a deck in here and it won't, like, fall out. This one, it'll just, it, it, it gives way more easily. I don't know if that's coming through on camera. And so if you try to put cards in, they'll slide. And what's worse is that this section is longer than a card actually is. So your cards will always begin to slide and they'll slide out and then it's like a whole mess. I don't know why this like was an oversight that they didn't catch, but the good news is, is that the sleeve kind of arm area is a lot larger, so there's that. In total, we have two of these and two of these. So we do have four dual discs in this uh, establishment. Okay, so another really cool thing I have is this uh, Dark Magician Girl sort of light up glass thing. Um, hopefully that maybe like shows up well on camera. I'm not really sure, but yeah, you just press this button and it just is battery power. Although I guess you could also plug it in, but yeah, it takes batteries. So uh, one of these is official and one is not. This is the Odd Eyes uh, 
Pendulum Dragon, and then a Blue Eyes White Dragon. So this Blue Eyes, I don't know which one of these has batteries in it, but the Blue Eyes, okay, neither of them has batteries in it. But the Blue Eyes one is from a Wish uh, product opening video, so it's kind of a cheap knockoff thing. The Odd Eyes is actually an official one from Duel Links, but honestly, for all intents and purposes, they're both kind of the same thing. They don't have batteries in them right now, though, so uh, I might run and grab some batteries real quick and we can see how they look. One sec. Yeah, so this is actually how it looks uh, with batteries in it. So it actually changes colors, which is awesome. Um, and technically speaking, I could actually take this Odd Eyes out, I believe, and replace it with this Blue Eyes. They're not like really maybe meant to do this, but like you could. And so now Blue Eyes will also glow and change colors. All right, so another really cool thing I have, speaking of light in the dark things, or glow in the dark things, is this Yu-Gi-Oh! Stardust Dragon Globe. It's from the Duel Link's third anniversary, I think, is when they added Synchros in. And so you might be thinking, okay, well, like, that's cool. Well, here's what it can do. When you turn the lights off, it glows. And I have to say, I think it looks pretty darn cool. How's that coming through on camera? Pretty neat? Pretty cool? You guys can see it? Awesome. Now here is one of the really cool things that I got from uh, a Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links campaign. This is a seemingly innocuous box. You know, not too conspicuous or anything. But when you open it, check this out. Is it a Duel Runner? I should tell me you gave, but the door runner comes up. Is this like coming through well on camera? Pretty decent? Okay. Was that not the coolest thing? It automatically does that when you open the box. That's actually where the Stardust Globe came from. It was uh, inside of the box alongside, I think just the, the, the cover or whatever. So yeah, very cool. This was uh, Shadows to Konami. They sent this over, I think for the Duel Links anniversary. So very fun product. Uh, you have to charge it up, of course, but I'm never getting rid of this. This is so awesome. Final globe-like thing my Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel first Invitational, uh, one year anniversary, like, this trophy, this thing actually has weight and heft to it. It might look like, oh, it's like a cheap plastic trophy. No. You hear that? Like, it's actually got, like, weight and heft to it. And it's got, of course, blue eyes inside. It says, first place for Team Guaranteed You Are. That was our team name. It was a team event. Shout out to Pac for uh, carrying me through that. It was, uh, I didn't exactly win my matches. But anyway, the point is, yes, I'm a master duelist. Thanks, Konami, for inviting me. I appreciate the chance to show the little scrubs how it's done. This is actually a really cool trophy, though. I really have to say, I think it is just absolutely amazing. We also have this Yu-Gi-Oh! art book. This is Dual Art Illustrations by Kazuki Takahashi himself. The man, the myth, the legend. Rest in peace. I'm not going to go through this entire book. You guys have probably seen it elsewhere on YouTube or the internet or something, but it is just a lot of his personal illustrations of these uh, monsters. You know, Blue Eyes, Red Eyes, Dark Magician Girl, obviously one of his favorites. Buster Blader, Celtic Guardian. These are all actually available in the anniversary pack in 2008. I remember getting this as a kid. This is the artwork that made Jinzo into my favorite monster. He just looks like he's going kind of mad with power and it's like a comic book aesthetic. Summon Skull looks especially evil and terrifying in this artwork. It's like a very different monster. Is this Summon Skull? I guess it's supposed to be Summon Skull. So yeah, and then there's even like some more like lighthearted art. This is Shiba Warrior Taro, actually inspired by his real life dog named Taro. So yeah, um, oh yeah, and the Dark Magician Girl that we will never get in the TCG because he refuses or refused to allow them to censor it and I stand with him. Keep the 
symbol on the brooch. It's important. And the, uh, the Ankh. I know that's probably what they would want to get rid of, but I don't agree with it. And of course, there's other cool art. So um, obviously, I'm not going to show the whole thing. But you can get it for yourself if these are still on sale. I hope that they are. And it's got this cool like, kind of dual cover where it's like Yami and Yugi and they're doing their thing. The light and the darkness. Speaking of Yugi, here's the Millennium Puzzle. This was actually something that we put together on a live stream. This is a Bandai figure and you had to take the pieces apart and like put it together with no instructions whatsoever. It took us several hours to do this, like eight hours. It was kind of crazy, but very satisfying to do. I will say I can take out like just the final piece of the puzzle and you can like put it in like how Yugi did in the show. If you do, maybe a 5,000 year old Pharaoh will help you win your duels too. Really cool. So uh, I've got something that a fan actually sent. These are a collection of all the different rule books from Yu-Gi-Oh! Version 5.0, 6.0, another 6.0. I don't actually think if there's a 1.0 in here, but this is really cool. A fan like reached out and they were just like, hey, I've got like official rule books that I just have. And I wanted to send them to you. And they even have like kind of different play mats that would come with starter decks and stuff. Uh, I don't know if I'd really call it like a part of a Yu-Gi-Oh! collection, but I mean, it certainly could be. So, yeah, very fun. I also have some of the different McDonald's Happy... Oh, okay, first of all, I've got the Yu-Gi-Oh! Mighty Kids Meal. Actually, I bought this on eBay. It has the, you know, Yu-Gi CD. In each of these, you got a McDonald's pack and a Yu-Gi CD. And there's a McDonald's pack in here, but I'm not going to open it. So, i keep it like that. But, yeah, there was the Yami Yu-Gi, Seto Kaiba, and Mac Twain Pegasus CDs. These had music on them as well as, um, I think there was like a small like, game that you could play. But yeah, it had previews of music from Music to Duel By available now. At least it was in like 2004. So, really awesome. You could get these randomly at McDonald's. Imagine a period of time, if you can, where Yu-Gi-Oh! is so popular that it's actually at McDonald's. Like, you know, in McDonald's Happy Meals. Pokemon still does it. Come on, Konami. Okay, I also have some old school Yu-Gi-Oh! magazines um, from childhood. So this one is a Beckett Collector magazine. Uh, this was just a unofficial handbook. I don't remember where this is from, but yeah, different Beckett magazines. I remember as a kid going into Books A Million and finding these and always kind of being infatuated with the different artworks because they weren't official artworks and I loved how they were like embossed on the covers. So even though they looked sort of funky sometimes, like I thought that Obelisk was just on his knees here, but I think that they're just kind of cropping it, I'm not sure. So you know, yeah, they were kind of weird. They, uh, I don't know, it just brings back memories. Something about like the Yu-Gi-Oh, just, uh, just that, that the Yu-Gi-Oh fever at the time was very neat. So yeah, these would have all kinds of things in the magazines themselves. This is always like one of my favorites, Lifer just wrapping around the building. By the way, if the audio changed, it's because I mic died and I had to change them. But yeah, in these Beckett magazines, they had all kinds of stuff really. They would like talk about the anime at the time, show new cards. Um, people could submit deck lists. There were like giveaways. You could win stuff. Submit art. It really does, you know, bring back kind of just a different period of time where Yu-Gi-Oh was just like on top of the world. Now you can't find this sort of thing in a McDonald's Happy Meal or something. But um, once upon a time you could. Shoutouts to people who have sent these over to me. These are not all mine. Some people have sent them. So. Next, I've got some Yu-Gi-Oh! prints from one of my favorite artists, Monaco Arts. She's got a Dark Magician Girl print. I really like this one. She's uh, large and in charge, and you can see there's different uh, things like the Spell Book, uh, Book of Secret Arts, Magical Hats, Magic Karibo, and the different ma Dark Magician forms. There's ma and Magic Cylinder as well in the background. Very cool. It's actually signed by him as well. I uh, got Yugi Jaden. You know, split protagonists, split ace monsters, both kind of in their ultimate forms. Jaden possessed by, I think, I guess Yubel or the Dark King. Um, and Yugi's got, you know, of course, the Eye of Wajak. Glowing on his forehead. Very cool. Hopefully the glare doesn't mess these up too much for you guys. It's kind of difficult. Um, Yami Merrick. Drawn him, of course, you know. I always kind of found it weird how, like, Yami Merrick just wore completely different clothes than Merrick. But he's, like, literally the same person, so I don't know where he got the stuff from. Questions that need answers. And arguably his most iconic Yu-Gi-Oh art, and maybe just art of all time, is the Yugi uh, 
and the Exodia and poor Kaiba. It's a very sad scene, but it's such an epic one. Exodia obliterate. So these were uh, part of Gallery 1988. It was like this promotion that they did in 2020, I want to say was the year. A bunch of different artists basically got the chance to give their take on Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, they were like officially licensed things that were sold at like this gallery. So this is a really cool sort of Yu-Gi-Oh! just print. Um, it's cool. It's got the characters. It's kind of plain. I liked it. It stuck out to me. But I think that a more unique one would be... Heart of the Cards, Seto Kaiba vs. Yugimoto in very western cartoon sort of style. Dual Monster Showdowns. Kaiba, Yugi, Tetotsumi Giant, Wing Dragon Guardian of the Fortress, September 29th, 2001. I think is when the first episode of the anime aired in the US of A. And the final print uh, that I have from Gallery 1988 is over there on the wall. Um, it's just so cool. It's very ornate. It's very detailed. It's Yugi vs. Kaiba, but like dark magician and blue eyes are like coming out of the kind of just coming out of like the clouds i don't know it's very cool i love the dark green high contrast kind of look so uh yeah very cool okay a few more things to go we're almost done i promise so something really kind of neat that i've always had are these um bcw card frames you can actually put cards in them and um What's cool about these is that you can like attach them together. So I don't have a screwdriver right now. I'm not going to really bother with it. But this is how you put the cards in. And you can kind of attach these in different ways to make them form like you know, a different pattern or something. And then hang them all up on your wall. Uh, I just wanted to show them real quick just because I think it's like a really cool concept. I think you can get these over on their website. So definitely check them out. Let me know I sent you. Uh, I just have a lot of like really cool, rare, old school cards in here. I Most of these are my non-first edition versions of the cards because like... Uh, I don't know. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with these, so I'm still trying to get first ed versions of cards. But I want to show you guys these. They're kind of cool. Check them out. BCW. Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links Puzzle, actually, if you can believe it. They sent these over for that anniversary as well. Some puzzle pieces. You can put them together. We did this on a live stream a couple years back. Uh, it's not a particularly difficult puzzle. It's like a, maybe, what, 200-piece puzzle? 200 puzzle piece? Yeah. So, kind of short, fun, but an easy thing to do if you just have some friends or... You're the type of person who enjoys doing puzzles. Uh, I didn't do very many puzzles as a kid, but I found this quite enjoyable to do. Though a little difficult because, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links' whole, like, color motif is dark blue. So a lot of the design is dark blue pieces, and you're just kind of trying to sit there and figure out where they go. But this is always a really fun, fun thing to have around. Another playmat I technically forgot because it's like a mouse pad. This is Exodia. Master Duel. Large mouse pad, actually custom made by Razor, if you can believe it. Nami commissioned them. This is one of the prizes I got for that Master Duel Invitational thing. Another prize I got is actually sitting on my chest. I've got the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel hoodie. They sent this out as well. Shout out to them. And uh, a hoodie and a bomber jacket. It's kind of this like purple bomber jacket, but on the back, it's got Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. This little sleeve, or that's not a sleeve, I guess. Well, actually, yeah, this is part of the sleeve. This little thing, it's time to duel. Very cool. So, uh, yeah, I would wear them both, but I kind of can't. Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Backpack. Um, yeah, it's just a cool backpack. I mean, I think I need to replace my own backpack that I take to events with this, because uh, mine's a little bit beat at this point. So, yeah, very cool. Another miscellaneous thing, we've got Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links headphones, official headphones for the ARC-5 promotion that they did. These are nice. So here's something kind of special. Uh, this is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel Big Gold Token. Another one of those Duel Links things. Um, don't know exactly why they made this, but I know they give it away in a lot of online kind of social media giveaways. So uh, yeah, very cool. Maybe you could get one on eBay. I don't know how much it's worth, but it sure looks awesome. Speaking of Zexel things, we have uh, Yuma's Dual Pendant. Don't remember exactly what this is called. A good luck charm. I think his dad gave it to him in the show. Yu Gi Zexel. And we have Yuya's uh, Pendulum that he wore around his neck. It swings left and right. Two just really cool things, both also Dual Links related when each of their respective worlds were introduced into the game. Also, I uh, of course cannot 
failed to remember to do this. Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship 2023 envelope. This actually contains some very rare cards. People were selling these for quite a lot online. It doesn't seem to have like a seal on it, at least mine didn't, so I don't feel too bad for opening it up and showing you the cards. A magic cylinder and a dark magician girl. Pretty awesome. They look really cool. Um, I showed these off pretty recently when I showed my, you know, world's stuff, so yeah. Are you jealous? Also got a set of classic Yu-Gi-Oh packs that we use in the Rare Hunter series. LOB, Metal Raiders, Magic, not spell, Magic Ruler, Pharaoh Servant, Labyrinth of Nightmare, and then you can see where Konami actually changed their logo. Although this one has the new logo, so that must have been... Anyway, uh, Legacy of Darkness, Pharaonic Guardian, Magician's Forest, Dark Crisis, Invasion of Chaos, Ancient Sanctuary, Soul of the Blues, Rise of Destiny, Flaming Eternity, and also when we were using Dark Beginnings 1 packs. It was pretty fun to use these as well. And our currently airing Slifer Slacker series. we got the Lost Millennium, Cybernetic Revolution, and Elemental Energy. Check out the series if you haven't already. It's fun. We duel with classic cards where the winner gets to take the loser's rarest card. Rather, a card of their choice. I believe that brings my Yu-Gi-Oh! collection to a close. It has been like two hours of recording all of this, so I am very tired. But if you guys enjoyed this, saw something cool that you like, I would love to answer your comments. I'll let you know where I could get, you know, where you might be able to get some of these things. Let me know what your favorite thing was and uh, what other cool stuff that I should maybe add to my Yu-Gi-Oh! collection. I would love to update this maybe in a year or so when I've got even more stuff because I am always looking like Konami in that Seto Kaiba briefcase that I'm really, really hoping they'll send soon. Don't have any platinum cards though. All right, cool. That's my Yu-Gi-Oh! collection. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, it's been fun showing this. I'm very tired now. I need to eat. I'll see you guys in the next one. Past turn.